morning, church. Uh, my name is Brandon Bow, and this is my wife, Chrissy, and we have the opportunity to share a faith story with you this morning. So a little bit about me. I'm 37 years old. I like anything with four wheels and with a motor. I like to be outside, like to hike, like to be adventurous with my wife. Uh, we have two dogs, so we like to go anywhere and do everything with them. Um, we just like to get out and travel. That's probably one of our biggest things that we like to do. And I'm Chrissy. I love dogs and coffee, too. And I'm probably more of the introvert that would be in the corner petting the dogs like last Sunday with Gina's sled dog. So that was awesome. <laughs> so we're going to share our faith story with you. Um, a little bit about me growing up. I thought that attending church on Sunday made me a Christian. And as a kid, my parents' divorce was really hard on me emotionally. I didn't want to blend into my new family. And then I also saw my dad struggle with anger, depression, and alcoholism. And I was dealing with bullies at school at that time as well. Because of my weight, uh, I was really bad at math, and I had a speech impediment. So I found myself looking for acceptance in all of the wrong places, mostly eating disorders, underage drinking, and just living carelessly. I went to a small high school, and one of my classmates was killed in a really tragic car accident. And that is when I started to question what happens after we die. So when I went off to college, I knew that I wanted something different for my life, that there had to be more than just partying, and I wanted more than just the traditional college experience, but I didn't know how or what that would look like. And when I got to college that first week, I received a welcome bag from a campus ministry that had some snacks and a Bible in it. And initially, I just gave that Bible to my mom, and I told her I didn't want it. And it wasn't until my grandpa passed away that I decided to go to one of those campus ministry meetings. And there, I heard other students talking about their relationship with God, and it was like he was their friend, and they talked to him, and it was just really real. It was a lot different than anything I had experienced because my relationship with God at the time was really one-sided. So I was reading the Bible with some of some girls in my dorm, and we were reading this verse in Galatians that talked about your morals and jealousy, selfish ambition, envy, and drunkenness. And that kind of described my life at the time. And it, it's not my proudest moments, obviously. Um, but my RA saw us reading the Bible, and he invited us to a winter conference, and he was involved in this ministry. And it was at that conference that I saw the emptiness inside of me was this feeling because my whole life revolved around me and what I wanted, and God was not the center of it. So it was there that I told God I wanted to live for him, and I invited him into my life. And I came home from that conference, and I asked my mom for that Bible back, and I just dove in and got involved with everything that I could in that ministry. And after graduation, I joined their staff because I wanted to tell others about Jesus' love for them. So I was home for a friend's wedding for a little bit, and I was joking around with my dad, telling him that I was going alone and I was going to be a missionary the rest of my life, living in a hut with pet chickens, and he told me that he knew somebody I might be able to hang out with. And it was me. <laughs> so, so growing up, uh, church for me was really just mostly a holiday thing. It wasn't something that we committed to or it was something that was really a part of my life. Uh, growing up, I was definitely no stranger to tough times. I, I always struggled with uh, some sort of addiction in my life, uh, different abuse within my family, with my mom struggling with addiction and mental health issues. Uh, my teenage years and my early 20s were by far from by the book. I always had something going on, and the funny side is my grandpa was the chief of police in the town that I grew up in, uh, but I still managed to find my way to handcuffs and getting in trouble and, and doing all the things that I definitely shouldn't be doing. Uh, at 20 years old, I got into a, uh, a very bad car accident. I had blacked out, and I almost lost my life. And it was a hard lesson for me to learn that I needed to clean up and I needed to make a change in my life. Uh, so I started going to recovery meetings, and I started to work on my sobriety. So fast forward to Christy with her pet chickens. Uh, in 2008, I worked with her dad, and I, I should have put a picture of her dad up with a forklift, but it... it I could just picture him pulling up on his forklift to me one day in a factory. I got my hairnet on, my headphones, uh, you know, what does this guy want? And he pulls up, he says, hey, Brandon, do you want to date my daughter? And then he stopped for a second. He's like, she's a dancer. And so I had to stop and, oh, really? <laughs> and, and I laughed a little bit. He said, no, not that kind of dancer. Christy was... <laughs> So right away, 20 years old, I got a dad coming up to me. I'm thinking, 
this is a mercy date, right? And so I show up and I pick up Christy, and obviously it was the other way around. I was the mercy date. Um, I'd never dated anybody like Chrissy. I'd never dated anybody that had a vision, that had passion, had desires, had an education, or as beautiful as Chrissy. Uh, when I met Chrissy, I had been a couple years clean and sober at the time. Um, Chrissy was home for only a short period of time between her stints in Brazil. And when I was hanging out with her at first, it was uh, basically a fake it till you make it because I was with a pretty girl. And, but then she left. She went back to Brazil, and it was time to make something happen. And so I had to make a decision. I had to find my own path. I had to make faith real in my life. So one night, uh, Tuesday night, one of my buddies uh, was picking me up to go to a meeting. Tuesday nights was one of our nights we went to a meeting. And way back then, we had CD cases. And so in the back of his car, he had a big case, you know, I'm sure a lot of you can remember. So I, I reached in the back, grabbed his CD case, and I went to zip it open, and he had a Bible in there. And that was a little off to me at that time. I never saw a Bible in someone's car. I never saw a Bible in a little case in the back seat. So I opened it up, and I said to him, I said, why are you driving around with the Bible? And surprise, Brandon, we're going to my church. We're going to a uh, recovery meeting. And I was like, all right, let's check it out. And so I went there, and when I went into the basement of this church, I met a bunch of dudes that look just like me. I always had reservations of going to church because of tattoos, because of piercings, because of criminal records, things like that. But I go downstairs and had guys in there that were not cleaned, were not polished. They had tattoos. They had long hair with braids. They had backwards hats on. But the biggest difference was is they had a strong connection and relationship with God, which wasn't something that I was used to. Um, so with rubbing shoulders with them, I really started to finally feel a sense of belonging in a place that I had purpose which led me to make my faith real. Instead of chasing a pretty girl, I was chasing after Christ. Um, so I ended up dedicating my life uh, to Christ with those guys. Shortly after that, Chrissy was coming back from Brazil, and of course I was super excited to bring this girl to my new church and experience these things with me. And We ended up getting engaged and getting married through that church and tossed right into ministry, you know, leading in uh, recovery ministries, jail ministries, and in, in different capacities in our life. And we always joke to this day that we, we skipped the honeymoon phase in our relationship because as soon as we said, I do, we were jumped right into ministry and, and just being busy, plus combining our two broken families was just a tough start to what we had. So they say that like seven years into marriage, things get really hard, and that was definitely true for us. That was when we hit a really rough patch, and it started with the loss of my dad, which was absolutely soul-crushing to me. And then shortly after that, Brandon fell back into his addiction and started getting in trouble with the law again. And I saw this different side of Brandon that I never saw before. And I didn't know, and I didn't like it for sure. Um, it shook the foundation of our relationship. And then on top of that, we lost both of our dogs within two weeks of each other. And we were struggling with our jobs, just different setbacks, and even some losses. And then Brandon's grandparents passed away and they, that was a huge blow because they were just a source of strength and encouragement for us. And there we were, just shattered and broken. Yeah, those years were some of the toughest of my life because I had lived 10 years clean and sober and then all of a sudden, boom, life hit us really hard. Chrissy's dad, our dogs, my grandparents. But through all those struggles and ups and downs, there's definitely no doubt that um, I put Chrissy through some of the hardest times of our life. Um, I struggled with my anxiety, my depression, different, just different things, and they really crept to the surface, and I put Chrissy through a, a living hell, and my decisions led us to a legal separation. Um, it was super difficult. It was one of the toughest things that I ever had to endure, but I realized that it was my own doing. I was the one that did it, and it's something that I still have regret for because I hurt Chrissy in really deep ways. And it was during that really difficult time that I just felt like everything I loved and cared about was taken away from me. And there I was, it was just me and Jesus. Here I was in this unhappy marriage. It wasn't the life I envisioned for myself, of especially being married to someone who knew the Lord and loved the Lord. Um, it was just a difficult time. And I held on to the promise that God can do all things. And I remember praying that, God, it will take a miracle for me to ever trust, love, and respect Brandon again. Um, and I can tell you that through a lot of prayer, uh, a lot of therapy, and the support of some amazing friends, that God has answered that prayer, and he has restored my love and trust in Brandon again. 
And even though that that time of losing my dad and then almost losing Brandon in a very short window of time was really difficult, I, I remember just feeling like God is my anchor for my soul, and I held on to that. And he dug me out of that pit like the song we sang, and I'm so grateful for another chance at marriage and for the gift that I have in Brandon, and I would have never thought a blind date set up by my dad would actually work out. <laughs> Neither did I. So, so even though we would say that we, we didn't have a honeymoon stage, I would say through all the struggles and the ups and downs that there's no doubt that I love Christy with everything that I have, and I would definitely give my life for her. And a while back, Christy and I were listening to a podcast, and there was a, a, a short phrase that really stuck out to me. And I have such a short attention span that I need short, cliche things. And this is what stood out. It said, if you're not growing together, you're growing apart. And this is something that really hit home to us. And we, I, of, of course, realized and Chrissy realized that we needed to grow and invest 100% in each other, not just in our health, not just in our education, but in our faith and in our relationship with Christ. And I would definitely not say that our marriage is perfect, but it's come leaps and bounds. Today we prioritize our, uh, our friendship one another, uh, with one another and then our faith above everything else. And... Again, our motto is if you're not growing together, you're growing apart. And that's something that we're going to stand on moving forward. So that's a little bit about us. Can you give them a round of applause, Michelle? Before they escape the stage, I see them already making some beelines somewhere else. No, um, I want to pray for them. So would you guys pray with me as we pray for Brandon and Chrissy? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Brandon and Chrissy. Thanks for just their willingness to share their story and be vulnerable about some of the things they've gone through. God, I just pray that, um, that you strengthen their marriage, you strengthen their relationship with you. And God, I just pray that um, as, as we listen to the story and reflect on it, that the things that we can identify with personally, God, I just pray that you move in us and, and have us continue to pursue you and, and, and learn from Brandon and Chrissy, learn from some of their mistakes and just tough times and trials that... Um, Pursuing you is worth it. Pursuing you reconciles things. Pursuing you uh, really makes things right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.